Hi, my friends. Welcome. This is the Back to Me podcast, and this is Heather, and I am super excited that you're here. You are going to hear some tips and some tricks and some ideas to help you live your happiest and healthiest self. I call it Back to Me because when you are taking care of yourself, Back to Me, then you can take better care of others, and we can all make the world a better place. This is Wellness Your Way, and I am super happy that you're here. Hello, my friend. This is Heather. Welcome. I was making a face into the camera. That's why I started laughing. Welcome to the Back to Me podcast, where we talk about all the things to make your life more fabulous than it already is, and maybe find you some ways to get unstuck if you feel like it's not so fabulous. And today, I have another awesome human being. We are talking with Joe Singleton, who wrote a book. Look, I even have it right here on my desk. Mara Dawn, Buddha Rising, The Awakening. I'm going to be 100% honest. I'm not done yet, <laughs> but but I am reading it, and it's super interesting. I've even got the little marks down on the page. Um, Joe, my friend, welcome. So nice to see you. Hey, Heather. It's fabulous to see you, too. I always love doing these because I'm way down here in South Texas, and you're up in Canada. Um, way up in Canada. <laughs> it is, and 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 I, uh, it, it's it's just so neat to be able to to, to connect with like minded people all over the world. I've done one in in Nigeria, one in the UK, wow. a couple in Canada now, and it's just, you know, that's part of this whole kind of awakening thing. You know, it's really cool to be able to connect from outside our own kind of cultures and borders, and uh, it's just really great to be talking to you down here. I'm I'm envious of you guys. Probably have cooler weather than we got right now. I don't know. Not maybe not today. We just had a thunderstorm roll through trying to break the humidity. It didn't. I don't know if it did it or not. <laughs> I, love I love thunderstorms. I'll trade with. Right. You. <laughs> All right. Cool. Um, I want when we chatted last about coming on the podcast, we were talking about how you ended up writing the book. And I thought it was super interesting how all these pieces kind of sort of formed and started to come together. So maybe you can share a little bit of that because before we get into the book, because I thought that was like fascinating. It is interesting. And the more, you know, the more, the more enlightened I become, you know, the more I understand, you know, um, that, you know, the universe, when it, when it puts things in front of us, it's for a reason. I, I, I don't believe a lot in chance you know, anymore. Right even fake that kind of thing. I also read tarot cards and I, over and over, you know, I see that. And I used to get just blown away by the, by the, the, the position of two cards facing each other and the, what we're talking about and all that kind of stuff. And, and I say, I don't get amazed by it anymore, but I really still do. But it's weird because I'm super blown away, but still I don't understand. But to answer your question, you know, this journey started out really cool. I, I, um, I was really heavy into existential philosophy. You know, I was trying to find the answers to life through existential philosophy. And there's, there's a lot of great stuff in there. Frederick Nietzsche, Jean-Paul Sartre, Simone de Beauvoir, you know, all of, all of, all of that is amazing stuff. And you can really see the kind of the nuts and bolts of existence, right? Almost it borders into psychology, what happens in our minds, you know, and, uh, and, and I ran across, I, I, I got the opportunity through one of my um, older professors and she was fit, trying to finish a book and she knew I was a tarot reader and had some ties with philosophy and tarot together. So thankfully she thought I was a good somebody to help her edit. You know, I got a chance right. to be an assistant editor on her book and, and I spent about two years with her doing that. And I saw her kind of put everything together and put the book together. But one of my jobs as the editor was to track down all of the footnotes, right? And make sure everything was right and classify them and all that kind of stuff. And, she, and one of her philosophers she used was the Buddha, right? And um, there was a book called What the Buddha Taught by Rahul Wapola. And it's basically a commentary on the Dhammapada. You know, Buddhism has blossomed into a lot of things like many religions. What it really started out has, has just become something completely different. Yeah. And this book is cool. It's called What the Buddha Actually Taught. And it's actually what, you know, where all of this started. And, and I kept seeing these quotes from him. I'm like, this is amazing. So when I was working on it, I bought the book on Amazon. It came to me the next day and I read it in a day and a half. And it's basically the Dhammapada. And it opened up just so many things in my mind, you know, and, and um, it, all of the things I had been looking for, you know, that I thought this, you know, 
there's never going to really be an answer to anything. Well, I found it the answer here in the Dhammapada. You know, I've studied all of the world's religions, philosophy, and all that. And it really seems to me, you know, it's the one thing that stands to reason, right? The Four Noble Truths say we all suffer, right? We all know we suffer inside. All things pass. Suffering too passes. Mindfulness and understanding that suffering too shall pass. Is, it sounds very basic and easy, but if we can cross that chasm in our minds, it really opens a lot of things. Um, you know, the concept of reincarnation is heavy in, in Eastern spirituality. And when you right. think about that, I was just writing about this the other day. Um, you know, when, when we put our the current life in context text with past lives and future lives to come based on tarma, karma and our evil evolution or devolution, it kind of stops time, right? All of the pressure we have of this one lifetime we've got to get, that stops, literally stops and, and your mind totally expands. And when you put the karma together with that, samsara and the whole concept of our world and all those things, it just, um, it, 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 it really came together for me. And I had this one line, there's a, in the very center of that wheel of karma, there's a pig biting the tail of a peacock who bites the tail of a snake. This is ignorance, envy, and, and hatred or anger all biting each other's tail going around the middle of the circle and it blossoms into this huge thing called samsara, which is the world we all live in. And there's multiple levels and things like that. But there was this line that, that, I, that came in my head that I want you to be just like me, or I want to be just like you. And we're all kind of chasing each other's tails, biting the other tail that, you know, that, that bites us and we never let go. Right. Right. Kind of that, that thing about the four noble truths is letting things pass and letting things go. Um, it really opened my mind and it sparked me to write this book. And um, we've had a lot of fun with it, a lot of good success. And I'm, I'm working on my second book now, which is kind of an expansion of this. So it's just, it's like peeling an onion, right? That the right. more enlightened we become, that this whole new level opens up and it just keeps opening and opening and opening. <laughs> so it's a really cool thing to write about. And um, th this book, Mardon Buddha Rise, is really designed to be kind of an introduction to both the concept of samsara. You know, we ask ourselves, especially now, you know, why is the world so messed up? You know, we just can't figure it out. And we, and we, and we come to these situations where we say, well, that's just life. You know, right. That's kind of a cop out, right? That's not life. It's, we're, it's a we're total cop out. We, we're here to be something much more than this. And uh, most of us don't do anything about it. In fact, 99.9% .9 of us don't do it about it. When you find out what an awakening actually is, it's a very rare and precious thing for us all to find. Um, <laughs> there's a little metaphor we can talk about later that the Buddha uses, but it's almost like I call it Powerball of the mind. It's like hitting the lottery, right? Finding your awakening because everything changes. However, like like Plato's prisoner in the cave, right? Once once we find out that it's not the images on the wall, it's the sun through crystals. I made my way out. Goes back into the cave, tells everybody, "Hey, this is," a, and they kick him out. You know, it's it's there's there's a there's a kind of a lonely path that comes with it. So, but it's a lot of it's a lot of fun and it's very interesting and. Um, you know, my mission, I have become enlightened, I feel, and my mission is to help others become enlightened. And we all discover along the way, you know, I don't believe our, our learning and our progressive ever ends. I think it's just like this expanding thing. So it's it covers a lot of cool subjects, but that's how it all started. Right. Yeah. It's I, I like a million questions, of course, were popping through my head as you were talking like, but what about this? And then so let's start with this. Um, so do you, you, I'm sure you know the phrase, you know, before enlightenment, chop wood and carry water after enlightenment, chop wood and carry water. <laughs> so no matter how high you rise, if you're still in the 3d, then you still have the things to do in the 3d. Right. So I guess that's yes. why you're still, you're still writing and you're still creating and you're still sharing the knowledge to help. So I think that we're reaching the point where they might not kick you out of the cave. Some people might go with you out of the cave. You know, that's happening. I, I can feel that happening, but it's very interesting. You said that it made me think about the concept of Nirvana, right? Um, Buddhism has split into two ways. There's the Theravadic and the, and the Mahayana Buddhists. The Mahayana say the Bodhisattva will come back a million lifetimes if, if, if he or she has to until everybody can be all enlightened together and go to Nirvana together. The right. Buddha did something very different. He's 
he kind it almost says we can all the only person we can control or help or, or destined is ourselves, right? Right. And he found his way and left, right? The concept of my book, Mardon Buddha, Mardon Buddha Rise the Awakening, is getting out of this realm of sin. This is not our home, right? We try to we try to fix and mold this place to be wrong. You know, we everybody wants peace in the world and to fix everything. The world that's not what this world is. It's desi- it's always gonna be messed up, right? It's it, it's it's our job to kind of find our way out. Over time, uh, um, you know, our enlightenment can help others. Yet just that vision kind of of nirvana is something that that once envisioned in our mind, like you said, we're 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 here between in the physical dual. We don't have to make any choices at all. We're all choices are at one at one. That's right. Kind of that joining of the collective unconsciousness. Joe, um, you're frozen. <laughs> but just kind of. Wait, wait, wait. No, you're frozen. <laughs> OK, so you might go, what the heck's happening? Well, we had a little technical glitch and I just leave those in there. So we're going to start this big, long explanation again. Joe, you're on. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, you know that's a beautiful thing. Technology, we've got backup. So, <laughs> so we were talking about your your quote of chopping wood and carrying water before enlightenment and after enlightenment. You know, and it's it's um it it kind of reminds me of, you know, a concept um, this concept of nirvana, right? Once once we kind of get uh, we we open our minds a little bit, and um, see this vision that there you know there is kind of a different way of of thinking, acting. And existing and and almost like a um, um, I call it a ladder of ascension for the mind, right? We're like on the first step, you know, just discovering something like the the truths of Dharma, you know, the four noble truths, all of these things, you know, the three jewels of Buddha, you know, the Buddha, the the, the Dharma and the Sangha, right? That's a good kind of way of looking at it. You know, we 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 first uh, find our image of of say a deity that 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 resonates with you you know the buddha is always smiling right it's a very comforting kind of thing then we discover dharma you know the truths that you know what the buddha said and then the sangha is like you know what we practice we have a new kind of bubble to do our our, our wood chopping and our water bearing in right um and kind of filtering out you know things that you know ways we may have, have lived our lives in the past and realize now you know I'm an angry person all the time. Um, you know, four or five years ago, Heather, I kind of stopped and said, why am I so angry all the time? You know, I realized, we, you know, all this crap I'm watching on TV and, you know, the news and politics, sports, you know, your, your team's going to lose half the time and you know, rarely do they <laughs> ever win at all, right? And so, you know what I did? I, I quit watching TV, man. And that changed my life, you know, because there's all of this stuff goes away. If something really bad or important happens, you're going to hear about it, right? Everybody starts talking about it all over the street. But, yeah. you know, you can turn off the TV this year and tune back in three years from now and the exact same thing is going on, you know, the same back and forth. And it just reinforces this concept of, of samsara. But, you know, the kind of the, the, the concept of the title of my book, Mara Dawn, Buddha Rise, Mara is kind of the lord of this world of samsara, right? This this kind of trickster magician kind of that always keeps us... Um, you know, on on we take one step forward and he takes one step back and we never seem to make any progress, right? Buddha rise is, is our understanding of Dharma, you know, a whole different way of looking at the world. And we have two sons in the world now, right? We, where, where we had one son, now we have two, you know, Maradon, Buddha rise. So that's kind of the awakening is a new understanding of, um, you know, what we're all doing here, you know, what is our purpose? Where are we going? It's, it's a beautiful thing to be able to find that it can be life changing. So it's, it's interesting because I've been listening to some people who their philosophy is, you know, we, everything in the universe is a spark of a, you know, a divine source of some, whatever you want, name you want to give it. And that your little piece of that spark has come here to have those experiences of what it's life to, like to be here and then and then you leave again so it's like i'm i'm 
I'm thinking about how those would fit together. You know, maybe when you've had all the experiences that you're meant to experience is when you, you, you know, you've ticked, and I don't like box ticking, but when you've ticked all of your boxes, you're like, okay, I'm done. I'm going to go somewhere else now. Right? Exactly. <laughs> you know, that's very, and that ties in with, 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 there's a few things that in, in my new book, I'm, I'm just finished a, a, a section that's very close to what you're saying, you know, the difference between Eastern spirituality, Hinduism, Buddhism, as opposed to, say, Islam, Christianity, some of the other major, you know, religions or spiritual systems in the world, is there's a few things that Eastern spirituality has. Um, chakras, right? Um, reincarnation, karma, right? That this, this kind of, these are things that, that you don't, they don't talk about it. So it, and this, this almost becomes what I'm calling a science of the mind, a spiritual science, right? You'll often hear the Dalai Lama say stuff like many, most religions speak of faith, right? I call this blind faith. He says, Buddhism uses reason, right? Well, we have to use our own minds to reason our way out of this as the saying, you know, you know, that old saying, Jesus, take the wheel or God, it's in your hands right now. I can't do anything about it. Right. It's, it's more of like these foxhole prayers are, are just they're They don't do a lot for us in the long run. You know, we have to use our, our, our reason. We're actually a, one little sense that one little spark you say, we're almost like one little sense in the, in the, in the finger of God. Right. We're part of that. Right. You go way back to the Hindu traditions, you know, Brahma is, is basically God, right? And and I don't know if maybe it was boredom, but, you know, envisioned the solutionary world and got trapped in it. That's us, right? And we have to kind of find our way back out. To kind of go back where you, you were talking about, that these experience we see over it, when you think about reincarnation, we're, we're, it's based on our karma, right? It's It's a ladder, right? If we do we do positive and helpful things in this lifetime, we, we're born into a better existence as we go. We, we retain more of that memory. Right. And we do negative and, 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 and things that, that are, that are degenerative to the world. We, we go backwards, right. And it becomes harder and harder to find that. So, you know, as we go along these, these, this ladder of ascension, we start to see these things over and over because we've been here before. Right. Right. And it's exactly like you say, what, what I almost think an awakening is where I'm at now on this, and this is a big part of my next book, is that I often think to myself, I tell my better half all the time, I said, you know, I've been here, I've been here, I'm around here a long time, and I'm, I'm tired, I, you know, I'm ready to do something else than this, please. <laughs> if, um, if you read in the first part of my book, Frederick Nature has a very famous challenge to humanity. You know, I love Frederick Nietzsche. He, he calls himself the master of ceremonies of our existence. He has a, a good humor, right? But one of his most famous, um, you know, philosophical treatises is called Eternal Recurrence. And he basically asks you a question, every human being, you know, would it be that you had the chance to come back and live this exact same life you're living right now over and over again and again for the rest of eternity? Would you do it? <laughs> yes, most people that, what would you say? Would you want to come back, Heather, and be Heather and do this whole thing all over again, exactly as you're doing it? I'd probably opt for an upgrade. Yeah, most <laughs> of us would, right? That question is designed to scare the hell out of us, right? But from his view, here's where, I, I make a lot of comparisons to Nietzsche and the Buddha, right? Western philosophy and Eastern spirituality. The difference is, um, Nature just kind of said, this is a, this is just kind of a random world and we just have to embrace this fire and, and live every day as if, is, if this is the, you know, the, to the greatest of our potential, right? With almost no landing spot, right? Dharma gives us a landing spot. It gives us this vision of nirvana, something like a heaven, you know, where we can, we, we can, we can grow and ascend. But right. not in one lifetime. It's not with, you know, we screw up 50 times and do good 49 times. So we go down and it's not that, right? It's a progression over time. It makes more sense, right? I often say a lot, you know, things don't travel from a straight line from one point to another in the universe. They go around in circles over and over like a spiral. Yeah. Right? That's us in our lifetimes over this. Well, thing. even the if you look at uh, th uh, re uh, representation of 
you know, we're circling around the sun, but the sun is also moving. So everything is always spiraling as exactly. we move, right? And if you look at a lot of these old, very popular now, these old monoliths and pyramids, they're finding out that, you know, tens, hundreds of thousands of years ago, they were tracking the sun over, you know, we only live a hundred years, but they're tracking timelines of thousands and thousands of years, right? It's, it's, it, it's an advancement. There was, there's always that little wobble on the axis, right? That yeah. changes it. This is my, I just wrote something called the definition of infinity, right? And I had this theory. It's that the for wobble? An eon, for an eon, <laughs> we live like this, and then we reach that point where we want to get away, and for another eon, we, we go to nirvana, right? We, we develop our own galaxy, and then kind of like Brahma, right? We, we desire, we, we, we start to lean back towards that physical sensation, that desire for that. And perhaps right. that's how it goes, and that little wobble just keeps things moving through. It's time like the Kali Yuga, right? Like, yes. you, like the, all of that stuff. We're always coming in and out of those cycles. And but before, when you think about it like that, we, you mentioned it was kind of right, right? We, we have to learn to enjoy the journey, which is the hardest thing for me because I, you know, <laughs> I. I, I grew up in the USA in the 70s and 80s, and, you know, we, we want immediate gratification. That's that's what we want, right? The universe doesn't move like that. It moves much slower, and we, we have to kind of run across these lessons. These lessons you're talking about, um, very interesting, too. I could cite, and I'll write about it in my next book, but three or four things that have just happened this year that were just devastating, right? But it, as I'm going through them, I know, hey, this is – this is something that's being presented to me because I need to work on it. You know, it's, it's a right. mirror. We see ourselves. Oh my God, I'm a thief or I'm a liar. Or, you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, this if, isn't right. <laughs> if we are to ascend, we, we have to fix these things about us. We're broken. You know, this is a broken We're We're caught in a net of samsara. There's a Pantajali says, you know, um, like birds from a net. The wise are led out of here once they conquer Mars train. So I believe your 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 theory is right. And and we do. I hate to say that this is like a school for what I, I hate that. But there are we things can, that we have to we learn. We can use a different about. word. <laughs> <laughs> I always can say if this is a school, a spiritual school, then we have some really bad teachers. right? <laughs> well, here's my thing about that. You, this just popped into my head. So I was thinking about like religions, you you kind of brushed by it quickly but i think a lot of religions do take away personal responsibility and the, a lot of a lot of our world right now takes away personal like being responsible for yourself you can blame someone else and i'm a huge you are the master of your domain and you decide how you want to be in the world and where you're going with that so then what was i going to say after that what did you just say well, I, what you just said is, is, is really a huge thing because it, that, it's that split between what the Buddha taught and what most Buddhists believe now is that we have to take everybody with us. It's selfish to just take ourselves and leave, right? That's what right. the Buddha did. But the Buddha knew that's, that's all we can do, right? He left behind the Dharma for us, a wrap, so we can find it. Buddha simply means awakened or awakened one. We all have the potential to assume Buddha nature and become Buddhas ourselves. That's the goal, right? Right. Buddha means awakened one. Um, one means awakened one, you know? And if, 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 if you read my book and you see really what samsara is, it's a very herd instinct minded thing from politics, from our, our, our education, even our family units, the way we're brought up and taught, you know, one of the great, uh, 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 Manjushri, one of the great, Bodhis stoppers, or it may have been Song Kappa, I can't remember, but said, love and cared for us as much as our parents did, you know, if they weren't teaching us these ways of Dharma, then we, that's not, that's not us, right? It, it's, we've been brought up incorrectly in many senses, and it's not their fault. They're that's just, what they learned. 99% of the people in the world are on a path different than, than the path of ascension, right? And now, I have to tell you, when I started your book, I was like, man, I don't know if I can read this. He's a bummer. <laughs> it's funny. I, I, I took out, I had a preface that I took out. I had a sample reader, right? <laughs> yeah. He said, my God, you've got to say something like there is a better way or something. He was worried <laughs> people would read this and, and just 
not not get past i i knew it was gonna i knew it had to pick up because come on seriously i tell people get through the first 35 pages and it's it's the greatest sin of any author is to lose your audience in the first couple chapters right unfortunately the way that the way that this book and the process folds out it has to be that way in the beginning and i did my best to kind of bring it up i shortened it a little bit believe me but it's it's um it's important right that we understand we you know the the concept that i that, that i really build on is is whether you're whether you're elon musk or somebody who's homeless right now and all of us in between we all suffer the human condition right no matter what how much we have or don't have we all have fear and anxiety that hold us back from what i call that that what does our heart truly want you know we've got these dreams and desires in our heart but all of the things around us tell us you can't do that. You've got to do yeah. this because you've got these bills and you've got this house and you've got these kids and you've got these cars and you've got all this stuff, right? All of the stuff is like chains that bond us, right? And we've got to learn to let go of things. Once we, the, the, I've learned I'm 57 years old now and I, I did the American dream. I, 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 we got up to the high apex and then when you start going down, you still got these kind of uh, lifestyle and bills, but you're making this much money, right? And you have to make adjustments. And I have found like like multiple wet jackets. The more you take off, the more stuff that I let go, the freer I become, right? And that's that's a, that's a physical metaphor for the concept of Dharma and Nirvana. If you look at what the Buddha did, right? He was a prince being groomed to be the king he left the kingdom and ultimately became in those days a beggar with a yellow robe and a bowl under a tree, right? And he found enlightenment and changed the world for millions of people. Well, he went and he almost starved himself to death because he thought it was bad. And then he's like, hold on, let's get, let's get yeah. real here. I still got this body to take care of. <laughs> you know, I often say, you know, I, uh, uh, Heather, I, I spent 30 years in sales, corporate sales, 20 years, the car business. I sold cars for eight years. I'm a good salesman. I've been really good. And I say, you know, I, I, the, the universe always picks out really hard things for me, right? And that's because it knows I can do it. Eastern spirituality, Dharma, is a very hard sell in the Western world. And this is my goal and my quest is to put in plain English, you know, why, it, you know, we, we really need to take a look at ourselves. And, you know, if we constantly in the end, you know, outwardly, we may present ourselves as happy, but if we constantly find ourselves unhappy inside, Drugs and medications don't fix it. I've been there. They wear off and, and it comes right back, right? And you feel like crap. That's right. When it wears Practice off. Surgery, right? what all of these things we do to try to make us feel better or keep us young or whatever, the fact is we are all dying. You know, people don't always look at that. And we really need to prepare for this kind of ending or this exit, right? How, you know, it must be horrible to get to the end and go, oh my God, I've meant to do this all along and i never did it right part of dharma and opening up your mind is under what am i here to do right and let's get started now right so i just had this pop into my head because i have my calendar book open next to me where i write down notes um you know how people will spend like i've got this much time to get this project done and they'll map it all out so that yes. everything gets done yeah. We don't do that with our lives. We're, we don't. Maybe because we don't have a, we don't know what our deadline is, but we know one's coming. I'm like, if you got stuff you want to do in your life, let's put it on the calendar and yes. make it happen. It's like, but make a calendar of a hundred years, right? And I've got that on my wall. I've got, I have that now. Um, and it's, it's when, when I first, going back to kind of how this all started, when I was working on Professor El Coley's book. She kept bringing up this line from the Buddha that says, you know, our life is preparation for death. And, and before I understood what that meant, I kept telling her, I said, we need to edit this out. And people don't want to hear about, it. you know, we don't want to talk about debt. But, you know, when you understand it, and this is kind of my, my quest as, as a Western author for the Western mind, when you read a lot of Eastern spirituality, if you're, you know, used to philosophy or high, you know, kind of intellectually stuff, it's amazing, right? But most people don't read that right and and that's what i try to do is create different metaphors that people can you know like like i have this little thing uh you know the the you know this 3d prism of ourselves becoming arrival and departing right it's important to understand every little thing of our lives has a lifetime once it enters our life 
it, it, it starts to die right away. And some, some's quicker, you know, I, I have a, a metaphor when we were kids, right? Remember you get that piece of bubble gum and you put it in your mouth and it's sugary and it tastes great. And then five minutes later, it's just a big gall of nothing and you throw it away, right? <laughs> right. Um, you know, I'm working today for a paycheck I'm going to get two weeks from now. That's becoming, right? And then I get paid and the money's in the bank, right? And it's gone. Right. And then I see some stuff I got to pay and it, it's hard to let that go. Right. And I, 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 now I have to worry again about keeping that. It's, it's that whole process. Right. And you know, that bugged me for years and years. And now I look back and I said, you know, I've never been destitute, you know, as long as I stay busy and do that, I, you know, I'm just going to stop worrying about this and whatever I have now is what I've got, you know, focusing on the now, and releasing what I call the, uh, the, the the haunts of the past and and the fear of the future, if you can get rid of all that and just embrace the now, that's what this is all about. That's what Dharma is all about. Right. And it can really let a lot of air out of the bubble. Right. A, a lot of people take meds for this. See, hundred dollar an hour therapist for this, and keep going. It's I, you know it's the American way, right? I just keep going, keep going. Stress is a good thing, you know. I can sleep when I die. That's one. I hate that. I hate that <laughs> saying. You can sleep when you die, man. Let's go. Um, I love to sleep now. You so. want to get there faster? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's it. So, I have, so the beginning of your book, like, I'm actually glad you didn't edit it out because I think that if people, like, I think people will will feel uncomfortable reading it because they can see that there's truth in it. You know, they're like, Ooh, I don't want to, I don't want it. I don't want to yeah. see it. But if they can get past it and keep reading it, then they'll say, Oh, okay. I don't have to stay in it. I mean, yeah. it might feel like my reality, but it's not really right. Exactly. The truth, the truth is a mirror. Okay. God is a mirror. I have this metaphor you'll find in a lot of my books is that we find the center of the maze is, is the minor. We find the minotaur inside of us and we find him, and it's a mirror of ourselves, right? This enlightenment, there's so many things that, that you just talked about that, that make this such a hard sell, right? The hard sell is we have to look at ourselves, right? Ignorance is a word that comes up a lot in Eastern Buddhist thought, you know? And the thought is that we are the ignorant ones, right? It's hard to say I'm ignorant, right? So I, I, I've transferred it to unenlightened. It's a lot easier for me to say, you know, I'm unenlightened about that rather than I'm ignorant about that, right? But until we, this is the hard part, until we can look at ourselves in the mirror and understand our ignorance, like me, myself, I used to yell and scream at people and be angry and all that. And this was me because I was fostering that. I was allowing anger to enter my mind daily and it can't come in and not escape. So if we let, if, if we intake anger, we have to be very, I'm a big proponent on movies and television and but we need to be very careful about what we let into our minds it's it's just right. so much poison around us i call it mind poison i think back my ex-wife she used to love super scary movies with blood you know and and i'd go watch it with her and all that but i still there's still visions right that these are these are these are what we call physical things and mental things once they get in your mind, they're hard to get out. Okay. It's some stuff seen is hard to unsee. Right. And this whole process of meditation yoga, which is what this book is about. And my next book about is sorting through all those things. We sort up through all seven of our chakra from our root to our sacrum, right? Which, which is our creative aspect to our belly, which is our will, our heart, which is our courage and compassion, our throat, which is our voice to the world our third eye, which is our intelligence and understanding to the crown, which is our connection with spirit. All seven of those, those are the seven key aspects of our lives, right? And my new book, Wheels of the Mind, is about this, the Buddha on top of these three spinning lotus wheels, right? Becoming, arriving, and departing. And we see, we, we, we cycle through each of these things in our meditation. There's a little door behind the back of the Buddha. And as they go to that departure part, there's stuff we don't want to let back in to come back around. We were talking about circular orbits earlier. Right. We want that to go out, right? There's stuff that we want to keep back in our lives. This is this is what meditation yoga is. People think yoga, you know, down dogs and this. In the beginning, thousands of years ago, yoga was mind exercises. Over time, it's developed into something that we, we think about very different. 
Union of the Science of the Supreme, Yogam, Yoga, Union of the Science of the Supreme. If you think about that, it's our mental union with the science of the Supreme, which is that that God spirit central, and it's the connection with all that. It's a very big thing. And, um, you know, it's, it's, um, it takes a while to get certain things out of your mind. Things I used to say, right, that, that hurt people. I don't say those anymore. And namaste every time I get through a meditation. Mm-hmm. Me, I'm, I'm, I like to talk a lot. I, you know, when I get no to way. The throat, when I get to the throat chakra, right, <laughs> that's my voice to the world. I step very lightly. What did I say yesterday? And man, now, Heather, this is this is the God. You know, when I say something or maybe have a few too many beers or whatever and let something slip out into the world, I know that goes out into the world and affects other people. And I have to deal with that. Sometimes, luckily, if it's something small for a couple of days, sometimes for a very long time to get that back out, right? So this is a personal awareness using our own intellect and reason to develop ourselves into to, to higher enlightened human beings, right? And right. we can only ascend from there. And, and to your earlier point, there's really nobody that can do it for us, but us. And we have to take responsibility for that. Right. Right. Um, One of my favorite philosophers, Jean Paul Sartre had a very simple concept called facticity and transcendence. Okay. The facticity of my life, maybe it's not my fault or my problem. If I was abused or I was brought up here, I, I, I wasn't raised in a good neighbor, whatever it is, right. Whatever that hang up is in my life may not be my fault, but it is my problem. Right. I can either carry that with me as I trudge along through my life, or I can leave it here and go somewhere else. That's transcendence, right? Somewhere along the line, we have to let go of our, we have to first understand our hangups and then find a way to let them go. Meditation yoga is a great way to let that stuff go and kind of become our own psychotherapist, right? Um, The God Apollo, thousands of years ago, always spent his whole life on a quest to learn the secret of life, the ultimate question. He went to the Oracle of Delphi and he found it in two words, know thyself, right? We look for all of these answers in the outside world to fix our problems. They're all right here, but we don't know it. It's completely free. We just got to find it. Oh man, (laughs) you just dropped a truth bomb. (laughs) Yes, it is. When is your next book coming? You know, I am searching for an agent right now. I self-published my first book and and I thought, you know, I was a great sales guy. I can be my own agent and it's not, I just want to write all the time. So I'm, um, I'm about 70 pages in and there's a long ways to go, but the whole thing is mapped out in my mind and it's just a matter of putting it all together. I did, I'm trying to write. We'll send it out to the universe. Any agents listening? Uh, (laughs) Listening, find me. I'm ready. I've got an amazing idea. And where do they find you, Joe? Um, Amazon.com worldwide, wherever you are, it's Mara Dawn, Buddha Rise, The Awakening, um, any, anything you do. If you get the book, a positive review or any kind of review on Amazon is oh, huge mine is for coming. me right now. Right? I'm not done yet, but mine is coming. <laughs> yeah, I'm still in process. That's, that's a big deal. And as a, as a, you know, as a, uh, as a first time author, I've done a lot of things. I've been an editor. I've been a publisher. I've done a lot of things. I've written three novels that will never see the light of day. Thank God. But um, finally, you know, kind of like when I found this, this thing, it's like, you know, I've been trying to write something meaningful, impactful all my life. And I, what I've learned is you can't do that until you, you find your voice. Right. And I'm a late bloomer. I found my voice at about 55 years old, but, I think I got eight or 10 more books in me, Heather, and I I just can't wait to to, to keep going. (laughs) I've got a whole bunch more podcasts. So (laughs) you're going to like, you're going to make sure you send me a message when, when the next one is ready and uh, we'll give it, we'll have a pre-launch party. Absolutely. It's so cool to meet you. I feel like I've made a new friend. I always (laughs) do on these, but, but there's something cool that we have together. Like we, we both have an attitude about like, you know, you got to have fun, right? In life. So. Try to have some fun in there too. Get through those first 35 pages and put that behind us and then let's get to the cool stuff. Right. Right. <laughs> so you know that I always give the guests a final word of wisdom, but do you have any more in there? You must have more in there. What's your final word of wisdom for first? Everybody's going to make sure they get your book and, and send you some love. Yes. And 
do all those good things. But uh, what 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 else have you got in the you know, trunk there? Sometimes I get asked that question. It's it's hard for me. There's so much, but there's there's and and. Eastern spirituality, I'll do this quickly. There's there's something called the five hindrances, right? These are the five things that, that, that hang us up. Lust, anger, laziness, skepticism, and angst or anxiety. Lust can be anything from shoes to money to cars to women and men and all that kind of stuff, right? We know where that can take us. Anger, Chocolate. we talked a lot about anger. Um, you know, if, if, if I, if I uh, accept anger in my life, it's going to come out of me, right? laziness we know what that is skepticism right we talked a little bit about this we're all kind of made to believe through our educational system through our, our political through our culture through our family and all this kind of stuff this is how it is and that's the way it is open your mind and think outside the box it's kind of like you said about those first 30 pages of my book it may yeah. not be comfortable or easy to read but read it and look at it you may just find this mirror for yourself that can allow you to 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 open your mind and understand lots of things. Be open to new things, right? My my mind was closed for forty five years, Heather, and and it's not a fun place to be, man. It it can be for times, but over time, it it'll get you, you know. And um, yeah, try to overcome that that skepticism and open your mind to new things. In tarot, when we get stuck on something on a card, I say. Maybe it's time to say yes to something you've always said no to or say no to something you've always said yes to. Try it once and see what happens. Amazing. Right there. That thing right there is amazing. Oh, my gosh. Joe, <laughs> Try it. you're awesome. You're so awesome. So are you, Heather. It's been great meeting you and I've had a blast. I can't wait for your next book to come, really, seriously. Um, and I'm glad that I made it through the first 30 pages. <laughs> yes. Woo. It, it, I'm climbing my ladder. Me. I've got this challenge. Even one of my reviews says, I, I have this challenge in my, my book, open to any page. People have told me this. Open to the middle of the book. Open to any page. And it's a magic book. Start reading, and it sucks you right in. I mean, it's not me. It's not me writing, okay? These come through third eye transmission between me yeah. and the Buddha every morning. And, and my, my meditations get interrupted every morning, sending texts and emails to myself. And I, I, the, rest, the rest of the day, I spend taking those quick thoughts and, and developing them. That's when they come. So it's uh, something much bigger than, than this person right here talking. So um, I hope you get it. And uh, any feedback is always great, man. Amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. Outstanding. Outstanding. Thank you, podcast friends. Send this around the world with hearts attached to it, okay? <laughs> Peace, my friends. Namaste. Namaste. Have a beautiful day. You too. See you soon. Bye-bye. Hi, my friend. Thanks so much for listening to this entire podcast. If you found it useful and you're like me and you like, like helping others, please feel free to share this. Just give it a like give it a comment. If you found something useful in it, there's a chance that someone else will find something useful as well. Also, if you have any questions at all, I can absolutely help and I would love to help. You can email me at heather at prosperityflowcoaching.com. If you want more of this awesome content, you can follow me on Instagram, Heather Stewart Coaching. You can follow me on Facebook, Prosperity Flow Coaching. And I have a personal request. I want to help as many people as I can with these podcasts. And if you could give me a review, hopefully a good one, <laughs> if you could share, if you could send this out into the world, I would truly appreciate it. I hope you have an amazing day. And I hope that you find your way to wellness by getting back to me. Take care, my friend. <laughs>